with power to sing. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to sing. With And now God is champion, he reigns forevermore, forevermore. There is only one name, there is only one name.
Father God, that there's no other name than the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for bringing us together this morning. We thank you for your mercies anew every morning. We thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. There's no other name than the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you are champion. He rules and he reigns in our lives. He's Lord of our lives. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Kingdom Embassy International. It's good to see you all this morning. Are you all excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us online. We thank you for joining us at this time. So please do share. Invite people to enjoy the service with you today. Because something good is going to happen to you today. Amen. I would like to start by reading a testimony that I have received from, I receive a lot of testimony, but this particular one came to me just recently, and I'd like to share it with everyone. Because what does the Bible declare? We have overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Amen. And this lady says, She said, good morning. I just wanted to share with you that ever since I've been sewing into Kingdom Embassy International, windows have been opening for me. The blessings are running me down and, and, and taking me over. I was supposed to pay X amount of money for something, but one of my associates just gave it to me. Can somebody say amen? amen. And she goes ahead to say, and one of my sisters that has been listening to the messages from Kingdom Embassy International, she's unemployed and struggling, just told me to send her my cash up because she is going to bless me. I gave her a business idea a few weeks ago and it's flourishing to the point that she had to stop taking orders and collect herself together. Yeah. Amen. Why don't you give a round of applause to Jesus? This is God. This is the hand of God. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He gives us ideas to create wealth. Amen. And when we take care of God's business, he takes care of our business. Amen. And we flourish and everything that we do, anything that we touch. Remember what I was speaking about last week on Sunday. When you're planted in the house of the Lord, you will flourish. You'll be, you'll be scraping snow before you come here, but you're flourishing. Amen. You'll be cleaning dust somewhere, but you're flourishing. You're dusting your house, but you're flourishing because you, God is at work in us and through us. Amen. And I would like to read as well Malachi 3.10. And it says, bring you all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me not here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. You see, this lady, she sowed into the ministry. She invited people to sow together with her. So she partnered with God. She joined hands with the Lord. She joined hands with Christ Love Ministries. So every glory that she's received upon this house goes to everybody who's connected to this ministry. Amen. And verse 11 goes to say, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. You don't need to fight. You're just supposed to rule and reign. Amen? Because God fights the battle for you. And if the enemy of poverty, if the enemy of lack tries to come and eat the fruits of your ground, God will chase him out before he even starts. Hallelujah. Isn't that a good idea? Amen. So let's keep on trusting in the Lord. Sometimes the sowing might take a little, the, the harvest might take a little bit to come, but do not fear. It will surely come in. Amen. So, and a couple of announcements coming up. We have the Kingdom Business Institute. Kingdom Business Institute. And that will be February 24th to the 26th. February 24th to 26th. It will be here at the Embassy, 20 Polk Street. And there's virtual sessions available. Topic is going to be ideation. Ideation wants to run. We always have ideas. What do we do with the ideas? Do we just discuss them and it becomes a topic? But we'll be looking at how to turn our ideas into assets. We'll be talking about how to make ideas that... Dad said something very interesting yesterday, to turn the ideas so that people walk through our ideas. People always talk about ideas, but the people you go to their environment where they have invested, you walk through the ideas. You see, they turn the ideas into assets. So we'll be covering this during the Kingdom Business Institute. And we also have the School of the Spirit. School of the Spirit will be coming up this March on the 24th to 26th, 24th to 26th, School of the Spirit. Both School of the Spirit and Kingdom Business Institute, you need to register online at psom.org. Register online at PSOM. Remember, this is a school, so you need to register. Share with people widely. Come. It's a joy and exciting to be learning and studying together. We'll be here locally at 20 Polk Street. 
at the embassy and virtual live sessions are available as well. Amen. And how many enjoyed the marriage one, the marriage con conference? It was great, right? Yes. So we'll be having another marriage conference on March 4th. So look out for that, March 4th. Please come and join it. There's so much you will learn from, from people with a lot of wisdom. I mean, there's so many things I learned and I never looked at marriage and relationships in, a, in one way. Probably I had Barbie doll ideas, I don't know. But yeah, all that was knocked out, but it's good to come and join us. Amen? Amen. So let's all rise up and let's continue with the, with the worship. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Something good is going to happen to you today. God is here. He's always with us. He's always moving. He enjoys our praises. And over to you, Jerick. Amen. Something good is going to happen to you because God's goodness looks good on you. Amen. I'm going to say amen. <laughs> Just amen. If no one else does. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your countenance shines on us as we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your countenance shines on us as we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face,
on, make it personal. Looks good on me. Your goodness looks good on me. Cause I wear and I wear your glory. Looks good on me. Tell your father this morning. Oh, your goodness looks good on me. Oh, thank you, Father. Your goodness looks good on me. And I wear your glory. And I wear your glory. Oh, and I wear it well. And I wear it well. And I wear
this looks good on me. Give me. 
24-7, forever, every single day. Hallelujah. Forever.
the angels bow down in adoration as we lift our voice we cry worthy worthy is the man come on join us and sing that the angels bow down in adoration we join them
have our own personal encounters with him. It's good we have a corporate time with the, with the Spirit of God, with the Father, but it's also a, a very important thing that we can have our moment with the King. In that secret place where you and Him are locked in and sink. In that place is a place of revelation. You can be in a crowd and learn nothing. Just one moment in His presence, you can learn everything about eternity. We need to have our own experiences with Him. Last night, actually this morning, almost about four o'clock this morning, We had, um, I was up and I got a text message. It was from Minister Tyler and um, he was just caught up in the spirit. I couldn't sleep last night. What I was doing was I was, I wanted to see things differently. We need our own encounter with Jesus. And I got a message from Tyler. He was actually having an experience in the secret place. Tyler, can you just tell a little bit about the experience of what happened to you yesterday? So I was up around 3.30 this morning. I couldn't sleep all night. And it was on and off, but it was like... I was translated. I couldn't explain it. It was more real than this world. And it just caught me up. I was, I kept hearing the Father speak to me. And he was just speaking to me over and over again. He said, I, I, want, to, I want to speak to you. And I just began to, I just, I was, over, I was overwhelmed overwhelmed in, in what I was experiencing. I texted dad, I got to my office, I, I just put on worship and I just started to hear his, his, his glory just overtook the place. I, I, it was like I wasn't in bed. It's hard to explain. I was, like they say, a parallel universe. I was in the secret place. And I was walking there, I was feeling things that I've never felt, I was seeing things that I've never seen. And I had saw dad, and that's when I had texted him, because I've seen him in this place. And we know we do kingdom here, and that's all fine and nice, until you see the dimension that he lives in, and that he's teaching us to live in. I saw him before the 24 elders, I saw him in the presence of God the Father. And I just was swept to my feet. I couldn't even get up. And I just started weeping uncontrollably. And the presence of God just overwhelmed my spirit. And I just began to see all of the situations in the world happening. And I saw like this scroll. And dad was reading it. And when I tell you I was in the same room with him, I'm telling you I was in the same room with him. I saw services that are in the future that have not happened yet. Experiences that we're going to have that are words, I'll ex try to explain, but the words are, are very difficult because I saw when dad prays, he prays as if, as if he's reading a book in the spirit. He's reading what the father has in his own heart. And I saw him reading and we were praying. I just saw this, I asked the spirit, I was just asking God. I said, God, what is this that I see in the realm of the spirit, what is this? And I saw the embassy, we were hovering over the chairs and this ring of fire, it was like a cloud of fire beneath us and dad was holding, holding hands with all of us and we were, he was just praying. 
And as you know, he is very precise. He doesn't add anything. It's very precise. And people get hit with the power of God all the time. And I began to see this take place. And I, I felt so weightless. I was walking in to the throne room. And I had seen these four pillars. I'm going to read what I had sent to him. I, I seen the worlds in a scroll. And I read them. And they entered me. As I saw, uh, I was texting dad, so I told him, I said, as I saw you there, it was you at the throne with the counsel of the king giving you instructions. And I saw the words, as I recall, as the assignment to awaken the people. But these four pillars in the scroll were clear. But I only remembered the one which read, there is a sleep that comes. There is a sleep that is of this world which has come over the people of the earth and its grip has bound them. I saw like this great cloud over the earth and I saw these four pillars. They were a pillar in the secret place, in the throne room, but they were a sphere of light piercing through the clouds and each pillar represented something different. I just began to see this so clear. And he said, all of these pillars agree as one. All of these spheres have to agree as one. We operate in the spirit by agreeing with these pillars. It is so important for us to agree with these pillars. And I kept hearing the Spirit. I kept seeing God just minister. And when I saw Dad, it is at the feet of the King. There's a massive throne. Elders and all of, the, all of the council of heaven just standing around over him. And he was kneeling as a king would kneel before a greater king. And I saw this robe that was reddish purple on him, on his shoulders. I saw this crown, it had many gems, stones that we haven't even seen on this earth. Gold, like glowing red. It was, it, everything about it was alive. And he had this staff that he had laid down as he was getting instructions. And the staff had this, these very distinct engravings on them. I couldn't make out what they meant, but I knew that what I was seeing, where I was, was not of this world. I could smell things, I could hear things, I could tangibly touch things. And he just began to speak to me. He said, everything I've shown you is in my word. It's time to awake the people. Yes. Uh, one of the things um, <clears throat> that um, he wrote to me, and um, I'm just going to read uh, just a little bit that way for context. It says that I love you more than anything as well. So I've seen you as you are in the fullness. Thank you for watching over my souls. I have no word over my soul. Now, as some of you don't know, <clears throat> why do I sometimes stay up? I told him why. I said, because when you are sleeping, I am watching over you and praying for you. That's why sometimes I don't sleep. Because we are living, and the Bible says that the days are evil. A lot of ministers are being taken out by the enemy. It is our place to watch. While you're resting, in fact, at that time, I was just, I was just actually thinking of him. Tyler, as I was praying over, I was just praying, I said, Lord, just strengthen him in the spirit. I was just praying about him, and I got a text from him. Sometimes as I am praying for you, you know, Paul said, I make mention of you always in my prayers. I see pictures of you and I just begin to pray. I'm talking to those of you that are watching us also, watching us from around the globe. 
This is what I do as I see your images. We just pray for our partners. We pray for people. Why do we pray? Because we need to set a guard, a watch over people. The last six months, it seems like the enemy has been taking out a lot, taking out a lot of great men and women of God. We have to stop it. The kingdom must stop it. We cannot be going to funerals. We have to see them fulfill their purpose. Sometimes why I'm up is because my soul is troubled. I just want to make sure everybody's fine. That's what it means to watch over. In the military term, they call it overwatch. That means you are standing as a sentry. We do understand the angels are there, but we also have a responsibility. The Bible says that God has given us the responsibility to watch over your soul. And I, I keep hearing, if, if you are within this commission, you have to be protected. I was shocked this morning. In fact, at that time that he was texting me, I got this shocking news. This shocking news. Pastor in Reunion Island. Young man, born in 1981. Died in a road accident. That should never happen. I said that should never happen. Dynamic ministry. Why? Satan is not playing games. You can have all the best security and everything. He is not playing games. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We cannot allow that. Can somebody say amen? If the church says no, the enemy will back off. And when he was writing to me, I told him, he, he was telling me quite a lot of things. And he asked me something. He says, I want to learn all that you have for me to be where I'm supposed to be as the ambassador. I ask if you to give me your instructions. He was just weeping. But these are the things that go on sometimes we don't understand. You have to be spiritually alert. Can I have a big amen? Satan is not playing games. The Bible says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. A healthy young man, a healthy young woman, before you know it, they're, they're, they're gone. Are you wondering what happened? They had their whole future ahead of them. Remember, you're dealing with different worlds. You're not just dealing with a physical world. You are dealing with different worlds. We have to arrest the enemy. Bring them under subjection. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? And the church needs to wake up. And I was telling mom this morning, and I said to her, why is, does it seem like the church is being attacked? It's because when COVID happened, the church went backwards and hit instead of coming against the enemy. You don't retreat in the kingdom of God. It's forward ever. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Are you with me? And I was telling mom, I said, the reason why the enemy seems like he's attacking us is because we are running backwards to hide. You don't expose your back. You face the enemy forward. And so while the church was making excuses, the enemy was taking grounds. It's time to take back those grounds. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. It's time to take back those grounds. Say it's time. Say it's time. We are the ones that God has kept in charge on this earth. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What has happened is we have retreated. We have come behind trying to protect ourselves. We, we are like everybody else. 
it should not be that way. We should be the answer to the world. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? And what, is it, what was the message the Lord gave you? Is it we should tell them to wake up? What was that again you said? I said that the Father just kept speaking to me. He said the people need to wake up. Mm -hmm. And I, want, I kept asking him, I said, I want to see the other four. Because I saw the scroll that Dad was reading. And when I tell you the scroll was living, it was alive. There was no table there. He was kneeling and then there was a table there and we had instructions. And I saw these four pillars highlighted. And he said, this, this particular pillar is like the ocean. It says, deep, deep calleth unto deep. And he just began to minister to me. And he said, the world is in desperate need to wake up. Mom taught a message a while ago about the 11th hour. This is real. Yes. This is real. Yes. And I saw while I was walking with him, I saw in a crusade, he was training me, and it was very precise. And one thing I want to point out is I, I, every instant where I was with him in this secret place, it was like I was one with him. I could feel his, his pain. If an arrow came, I felt it. And it was, it was very precise. And the Spirit of God kept saying, this is your training. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just stand up right now. Just take a moment and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that we should command our morning. We should command the day. You should command the day. Also begin to command the week. And nothing can happen to anyone in the family. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want to pray for ministers that have been under attack. We rebuke every sickness that has afflicted them now. Loose them now in the name of Jesus. Every attack of the enemy. There shall be no more accidents. No more debts. We rebuke that spirit of debt. In the name of Jesus. All over the world. Attacking the children of the kingdom. It shall not be. Every sickness goes. That dark cloud that has been over them, we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is not taking anyone out. The Bible declares that we have been given power to trample over serpents and scorpions. We have the authority to tread over them, to step on them, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We are going on the offensive. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray for everyone that is part of this family, everyone connected in the kingdom of God, ministers, even those that have spoken against us. We pray and we stand in the gap for them that the enemy cannot touch them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we come against all the attacks of the enemy no more sicknesses those dark clouds are broken in Jesus name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we decree today that from this moment the enemy has no inch into the territory of the kingdom of God he falls back to his lines in fact we are coming into his territory now in the name of Jesus we Father, give us souls. Give us souls. Give us souls. You declare your word that we should ask of you. You will give us the nations for an inheritance. We possess the nations now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We possess the nations now. Hallelujah. We call for the nations all through Central and South America, the Caribbean, Asia, Africa, Hallelujah, Europe. We decree that souls are coming in the millions. Ke lebran de lebo satala. Leban da la bate lebratish. Ke lebran de lebo saka la bran de lebo sa. Ke la bran de lebo se ke lebron de lebo sa. Hallelujah. South America is being saved. Hallelujah. Central America is being saved. Hallelujah. North America is being saved. 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus acknowledge you as Lord you we acknowledge you as King the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and even those that dwell in it and today they will respond to the voice of their King we decree that from this moment from this moment every arrangement with death is cancelled every covenant with death is cancelled no more sickness no more, no more death hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus it shall not come near the church we pray for ministers around the world that the enemy has attacked in their bodies those in California those in Europe all through the United States in Africa and Asia rebuke that enemy of sickness now loose them now let them go in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we come against the enemy take your hands of God's people in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father we give you praise we give you praise we adore you. We worship you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And the church say, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. You may be seated. Everybody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Are you ready? It's, it, it's kind of difficult. Let's this I can't hear from this either I can't I can't hear from them now it, it is it is sometimes hard to sleep when you are fully alert to the things of the spirit am I correct we have to learn to be alert we are not gonna allow the enemy to surprise us can I have a big amen can I have a big amen the days of surprises are over we have to have that element of surprise we will do what he is not expecting can somebody say amen can somebody say amen we have to be the ones on the offensive and not the enemy can i have a big amen so what has happened is the church instead of being on the offensive we have been playing defense the days of playing defense is over can i have a big amen hallelujah so what I want to share with you today is the key to your victory. Everybody said the key to my victory. Let's look at 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. We're going to be talking in the area of releasing God's creative force. Releasing God's creative force. You see, God has made it so easy for us to win. But the problem is, a lot of times, people do not understand how God operates. The key to your victory. The Bible declares in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It tells you, 
exactly how to think. It says, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Everybody say them. Whatever and whoever them is, you have already won. You've got to start thinking from the position of victory. Are you with me? You're fighting from victory to victory. You're not fighting to win. You are fighting to believe you have won. Are you with me? Now, I'm, I'm still very slightly uncomfortable with the sound. I hear myself very well in the hall. But uh, close by here. That way, I don't want to stress my voice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure a bit of the travel is up. Mid-range also. I want to be comfortable. The Bible declares that that's better. I like that. The Bible declares this. It says, you are of God and you've overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you. Say, he that is in me. Say, he that is in me. You must recognize there is somebody in the inside of you fighting on your behalf. The thing is, because of society, we are conditioned to fighting for ourselves. It's great now. You see, I was coming and the Lord began to speak to me. He says, the kingdom is an ever advancing kingdom. It's always in motion. The kingdom of God does not retreat for the enemy. We take grounds. Every kingdom wants to take new grounds. So what happened during COVID was the church and the kingdom of God withdrew and left this open space. It's called the law, the, 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 the law of vacuum. When there's a vacuum, something will fill it. Power vacuum. When there's a power vacuum, somebody's going to step in there. The church was supposed to engage the world and supply solution. That would have been the church's finest hour to start healing the sick. We would have put an end to that. But instead of doing that, then we begin to intellectualize everything. We become philosophers. Empty messages with our power. And we sound like motivational speakers. Am I telling the truth? We didn't sound. And all of a sudden, miracle meetings stop. Everybody hides up. We never stopped. Why? You've got the best defense is a good offense. Can somebody say amen? You cannot retreat when the enemy is coming against you. You advance. How do you do that? Everybody says strategy. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. It tells you exactly how to operate. Because today, I want to give you some keys that would unlock your victory. And it begins with this. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Say, my faith. Say, I have the tool to win. Say, I have the tool to win. You see, our problem is we think we need to get something. You have faith. It's been dealt to you the measure of faith. Everybody say the measure of faith. But how do we exercise faith? We know we have faith. We believe in Jesus. That's wonderful. But how do we actually exercise it? You hear people talk about faith. They talk about, so we think faith is just an abstract thing there. How do we get that in place? Are you with me? You see, the kingdom of God is not something that's just in your heart. The Bible says the kingdom is within you. But the kingdom of God must be heard in your speech. If somebody speaks Arabic, walks in here and starts speaking Arabic, wouldn't you know where he's coming from? It's seen in the speech. He might look like anybody, but he starts speaking the language. If I start speaking Chinese, 
something switches in your head. You're looking at me, at, is this Chinese? This is a black Chinese man. Language. Everybody say words. words. Say words. words. See, words are the vehicle that changes atmosphere. There is something in you that is so powerful, it's called your tongue. Say my tongue. A lot of times we don't use it. We use it to complain. We use it to talk about our problems. We use it for the wrong thing. Do you realize that what we call Christianity, it's called the great confession of the great profession. When you say the profession of our faith means the speaking of your faith. The speaking. See, you, you don't ever create a thing without speaking it first. You, you speak it first. And then you create it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So uh, the, the power that we have, God has already given us those. It says it's your faith. But let's not get caught up with the word faith and miss the realities. The substance of it. Because in Christianity, we like cliches. We like catchphrases. We like to do things a little differently. We have, oh, I have faith. Do you have faith? Don't you have enough faith? Listen, settle it today. Say, I have it. <laughs> the problem is not having faith. It's using faith. The Bible says that your faith is growing exceedingly. See, God gives you the faith, but you've got to grow it. God gives you the seed of faith, but you have to plant the seed and water the seed and cultivate that seed. Faith is useless or a seed is useless in your pocket. That's right. So most people have never ever exercised their faith muscles. Are you with me? So the kingdom must be heard in your speech. When you come to a place, people must hear a distinct difference in what you say and how you say it. You cannot sound like others. In fact, when you speak, they should do this. Take a second look. You sound different. The kingdom is there. When everybody's saying, oh, the things are bad, they say, don't worry, we got that covered. When you sound like that, it shocks them because everybody sounds the same. The sky is falling. He yep. tell them, no, the word I speak will hold the sky. They look at you, what? Yeah, it's upholding all things by the word of his power. So when we speak the word of God, skies don't fall. That's right. Can somebody say amen? amen. You mu there must be a distinction in your speech. Your tongue is a creative force. I say your tongue is a creative force. Amen. Let's look at the scripture because I want, I want us to, to learn today and settle it today so that we don't have to wait till tomorrow or next week to start enjoying victory. I want to enjoy it every day. Can somebody say amen? I don't need to spend 24 hours to enjoy it. I want to start now and start knocking the devil out. Amen. Can I have a big amen? Whatever you're doing, you've got to understand that you have the victory. You have overcome the world. You've got to start thinking like a champion. You've got to have victory on your mind. Say, I've got victory in my mind. You have to start thinking, I have absolute victory over every situation I face. Listen, it doesn't matter what it is. The doctors give you a report, smile. You have victory already. Amen. See, attitude. In the kingdom, you can, they can hear the kingdom language and they can see the kingdom attitude. Jesus, he didn't care with, when they told him that Lazarus' daughter was dead. He, told, he turned to him and said, fear not, only believe. That's how Jesus spoke. When they told him, don't bother the master, your daughter is dead. He turned immediately and said, fear not. There was a distinct difference in how he sounded. What are you facing? Whatever it is from today, your word will stop it. Amen. See, when you have revelation, you stop praying long. That's right. Are you with me? People that pray long don't know what they're praying about. It's true. Jesus taught that. He says the, th the, th the thing that by their much speech, talking, 
they'll be heard. Yep. Th- that's not my words. Those are the words of Jesus. That's right. So if you have a problem, taking it up to headquarters. <laughs> Am I right? Because everybody's like, oh, well, he's telling us oh, he's against prayer. I'm not against prayer. I didn't say that. I say you just pray less if you know more. Your life is not about prayer. Your life is about executing the kingdom mandate. Amen. It's all oh, our life is about. I've heard all these cliches in church growing up. We have to pray. We have to, and we are praying and then buying the solutions from others. Am I telling the truth? The church is praying while the world is supplying solutions. While the church was busy praying and getting close to Jesus, they came up with a COVID uh, uh, vaccine. We should have been healing the sick. Instead of doing that, we went pray. And then all the people started getting solutions. And then the church lined up for the solution too. I'm telling the truth, right? Don't hate the messenger. Just take the message. <laughs> you know, when people, they, they can't stand your message, they attack you. Oh, he's a lefty. He's a righty. He's a centrist. He's a, he says something, come on, what I said, is it true or not? I don't care what I'm center forward or backwards, it doesn't matter. My, what I said is the truth. Yep. Take it. You know, if they, can, if they cannot stop your message, they attack you. We said, oh, well, why are they talk, attacking this guy? Oh, he's always bringing the right, the right wing people. No, you haven't told me why. You just told me who he brings. Telling me his drinking buddies. Did I ask you for that? I didn't ask you for a list of friends. What did he say wrong? Well, he hangs out with this person. So what has God got to do with what he said? Am I telling the truth, right? Well, he, he talks to these people too much. That's why he doesn't talk to you because of your thinking. It's thinking, thinking. Everybody say, I have the victory. Say, I have the victory. Every day you get up in the morning, command your morning. Tell your morning you're going to shape up. I don't care whether the bills are there. It doesn't matter what it is. You are going to win. Can somebody say, amen? You've got to start. You see, you've got to begin to reprogram yourself. But it starts with your speech. Everybody say, my speech. Say, my tongue. There's a creative force in your tongue. God used it, so can you. Are you with me? The kingdom can be seen in your actions. The kingdom can be experienced in your lifestyle. Areas of my lifestyle. That means how you're living it. Do you know if you're a kingdom-minded person, you don't care about people's opinions? You care about God's, God's word. Can I have a big amen? Everyone is saying, well, we don't like him. So who cares? You don't have to like me. God loves me. He's crazy about me. Glory to God. I will cast out that stupid devil that's possessing that person. <laughs> amen? See, stop worrying about what people think. If God has said about th- things about you, you just go for it. You can't fail. He's giving you his word. But the key is what you say. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Because it's going to help you understand how life works. You are sneered by the words of your mouth. What you say. You are entrapping yourself by what you say. Your life is the total of what you've been saying yesterday, today. You've heard teachings on the tongue, the this, the that, and it doesn't register. We start today, we start learning about it, and then after eight hours, we go back and talk old talk again. (laughs) Am Am I telling the truth? It's like I walk in victory, then you go and see the price of bread. Oh, I can't do it. Am I telling the truth? You're victorious in the church. Then you go to Walmart. (laughs) Somebody gave me a sticker with a picture of uh, a person that is the president. I didn't call any names. Person of what I don't know. He says, I did that. 
put it in the gas, the gas station. <laughs> hey, all the political people are like, oh no, we're going to turn you off. You're talking against, I didn't call any names. If the shoe fits. <laughs> Everybody say hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday I was talking to uh, one of my buddies that owns a business. I said, I am not concerned whether the price goes up or down. We are still winning. Amen. We float on top. Can somebody say amen? amen? We are smiling every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? Why? Attitude. How you think and what you say. If you can get your attitude right, if you can get your focus right, keep thinking the, wrong, the, the right thing, keep speaking the right thing, watch what happens. Everything around you begins to resonate to your frequency. Are you hearing me? There is a sound. See, when you speak, you release a frequency. Can I teach you? See, why is it your tongue so important? Because sound brings a particular frequency. Are you hearing me? And that frequency would affect anything within that, that sphere. That's right. Are you hearing me? There's a frequency you release when you speak the word of God. You're releasing God's frequency. Everything around that begins to shape up like God. Are you hearing me? Everything just line up like God. You, you, you don't have to. It's just a release. It begins to resonate at a particular frequency that you see and hear heaven everywhere you go. Amen. You're commanding things around you. There is a, that's what the Bible says. You're, you're sneered by the words of your mouth. Let's look at that scripture again. Proverbs. Is this helping you? Proverbs chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. Let's keep going. Verse 2. <clears throat> Verse 2. And says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. He said, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth, not somebody else's mouth. That's right. Your mouth gets you into trouble and it can get you out of it. Absolutely. What got you into trouble can get you out of it. All you need to do is change what you're saying. Keep reading. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. You are taken with the words of your mouth. Some people's mouth is what's killing them, not the devil. Yep. Am I telling the truth? Do your mouth get into trouble? You know to call it foot to mouth disease. Yeah, let mom give a story. Just a little um, tiny, tiny story. Um, there was a woman... Many years ago, we were doing Bible studies. I don't know if you remember her. She came to the Bible study in Providence. And um, she was mad at God because her spiritual mother passed away when she was in her 40s. And she said, how can you say God heals all the time when this woman of faith, mighty faith, died? And she, as she kept talking, she revealed what it was. It was her words that killed her. Because when she led this woman to the Lord, she said, you are going to be my last mission on earth. And it was only maybe a couple years later, she ended up dying. The lady said, you are going to be my last mission on earth. So the mission accomplished. That's right. It's a spiritual law. And you're wondering, but the person is still very young, 40 years old. And you're saying, well, it's over. Words. Have you ever seen some people, not a sickness, healthy, doing well, all of a sudden, just sleep and quit? Everybody's crying. Heart aches. Oh, he left too soon. And all the RIP, obituary, everything, everybody coming home, tell her, oh, he was such a good person. Da, 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 da. But question is, why did it happen? That's the question. And we come up with excuses like, well, it was his time. Are you sure? Could it be his mouth got him into that trouble? Listen to people. That's why when people say, people say I love you to death, watch it. The Bible says you should give account of every silly word. 
Every idle word, the words you're not thinking about, idly, just called lazy words. Those lazy things we throw in. You give account. Because in the realm of the spirit, there's nothing like I'm joking. Satan takes those words and they're energized. You energize it with your speech. Satan just runs with it. So instead of saying, putting death, change it to life. We are carriers of life. Can somebody say amen? And we are going to be here and live a long life. Amen. Can I have a big amen? amen? We have a mission to fulfill. Somebody said, it doesn't matter how long you live. Yes, it does if you have purpose. Amen. It doesn't matter if you don't have purpose. It does matter when you have purpose. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Because I hear people tell me all the time, well, you know, it is, it's not how long you live. It's how well you live, right? But how about living long and well? Who says you can have both? Speak for yourself. I'm going to enjoy both. With long life, he will satisfy me. The purpose I have, I can't do it overnight. I need time to get it done and whip the devil wherever I go. Can somebody say amen? That's how we're thinking. We, we are militant when it comes to things like that. We don't negotiate with the devil. He's a terrorist. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Thank you. <laughs> we kill them. That's what we do. I remember Prophet Eva said, we're going to kill the devil tonight. I love him. He said, hey, man of God, we're killing the devil tonight. We'll kill him again tomorrow. He's a terrorist. <laughs> I love our people. We just, we just have crazy people, right? Crazy good. <laughs> we, uh, poor snake, we flatten it again. Tomorrow will pass by. It's not dead yet. A little more. Nonsense devil. Can I have a big amen? You've got to be bold. Satan is scared of people that know who they are. He's afraid that once you discover who you are, it's over for him. Do you realize when you are born again, what, what caused you to be born again? Everyone say my tongue. See, your new birth begins with your tongue. Supernatural transaction took place because you said something. Amen. If that can happen and you come from death to life, why can't that keep you alive? Amen. When you said, I believe in my heart, I confess it is Lord, and then you're saved. You go from death to life. Words, your tongue. Why can't you put the same power to transform your world? You said that when you got born again. But then we said that and we got born again and see our lives are changed from being criminals, being crazy people, to becoming people that are showing the glory of God. He said we were people that were not, but now we are the people of God. Yes. All of a sudden, a criminal stopped being a criminal because there's a change in nature. How did that change occur? It occurred with your tongue. If your nature can be changed with your tongue, why can't your world be changed with your tongue? <coughs> Is this helping you? Is this helping you? What, what am I saying? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Let's read it. Romans chapter 10. Because I want to tell you there is power in your speech. Don't diminish it. Some people said, but uh, do you know some people have no control over their speech? Free for all. Anything, there's no filter. I, I, I just got to get out of my feelings. Feelings? Your feelings that got you into trouble? Thinking feelings? But we have feelings. Yes, you do. But it's not supposed to control you. Right. You tell the feelings, shut up. Right. Sit over there. <laughs> I want to talk. Shut up, feelings. Sit over there. <laughs> you don't own my mouth, feelings. <laughs> I just feel. I just feel. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Sit. No, that's how some people, they, they need to have a conversation with their feelings. A firm conversation. 
Ah, you don't know how I feel. You don't understand me. I don't need to understand your feelings. You're not to be understood. You're meant to be disciplined. Amen. Time out. <laughs> oh, you don't understand my inner, inner child. Yeah, the inner man was give it his inner spanking. <laughs> and the inner child will behave. See, you have an inner child, we have an inner man. Discipline it with the word. Can somebody say amen? amen. Are, you, are you with me? Some of you are having graphic pictures, I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm doing it on purpose because I want you when you're not here, you're there and the feeling's coming, you, you have this picture. Oh, dad said, sit over there. <laughs> you tell your feeling, hey, stupid feeling, take a seat. The feelings want to whine. <laughs> Some of you, you, you be like struggling. Oh, it's coming out. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. It's like, I want to give my peace of my mind. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Am I right? You know, I just, I just want to tell them off. Give a piece of my mind. <laughs> if you give this one, you have none left. You're mindless. <laughs> lose anything, but don't lose your mind. Yeah. Giving pieces of your mind everywhere. <laughs> it's like, would you like strawberry with, you, with my mind? It's like, I, it's like cake. This my mind. Have some. You need some whipped cream? Stop doing that. But you see, we do these things and don't think. We go around like, well, I'm going to tell them off. Don't. If you start talking to them, you're elevating them to your level. Don't give them that kind of dignity. Just smile and walk away. That's enough said. Your silence is so loud. They have to close their ear. You're too classy for that. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big Amen. <laughs> I think some of you, you just know what to do with your feelings now. You say, say <laughs> all right, so I got to get this off my chest. What's it doing in your chest? Yeah, I got to get this off my chest. Your chest? I didn't see anything in your chest. You have something in your chest? Why? Get it off my chest. How did it get there? <laughs> Let's meet the Congress to discover why and how we got there. The Congress would do everything to understand why and how. Stupid. Well, just. <laughs> how did it happen? Because it did. First of all, that's what the Bible says. Cast your cares on him. That means don't keep it in your chest. That's right. <laughs> next, next day we put on a t-shirt. It's off my chest. It's no longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got my feelings off my chest. It's with Jesus now. <laughs> it was crucified. <laughs> Everybody say Hallelujah. Let's read it. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy if mouth. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. There is a transformation that happens with your tongue. If your tongue can change your nature, it can change your world. You see, but we know we are born again, we said something, and our lives were changed forever. But then we stop using what changed it. You can create a new world today with your speech. Amen. Begin to design it. Amen. Part of why I was up last night, I was designing a new company. Amen. See, I am thinking about it. I'm praying for you, and I'm thinking, oh, we're going to do this. 
This is what is going to happen. I am thinking, I'm speaking it. I said, it's done. Amen. It is done. Amen. Why? I write it, make it plain, and we start implementing. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you allow your feelings to rule you, you will never get anywhere. Even like a, a pinball machine. Ting, 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 ting. Your mind will be all over the place. This is helping you. Now let's get down to this. You see, you've got to start understanding what the Bible says. It says, you shall say, verse 10. Let's read it. For with the heart man believeth unto For with the heart you believe. Say, I believe, I believe with my heart. Now, they're not talking about your blood pump. They're talking about your spirit. With the spirit you believe. And then with your mouth, confession, confession is made unto. Everybody say unto. unto. There is no salvation without confession. Your tongue controls the direction of your life. If you don't like how it's going, change your speech. You see, you don't become a millionaire talking like a beggar. You don't become a winner talking like a loser. I can tell what people say by looking at their lives. It has nothing to do with how much you pray. It has to do with what you say. Are you with me? Are you with me? Do you know that when you speak the word of God in your speech, it brings victory every time? Regardless of how you feel. You, sometimes you don't feel it, just speak it. See, it's a material. Everybody say amen. amen. The word of God is material. Everybody say substance. Say it's material. Just use the material. It has nothing to do with your feelings. If you're going to build a house, you build a house. Do you have to feel like building a house? No, you just build it. You have material. Can somebody say amen? amen. So use the word of God as material regardless of your feelings. Right. Because the Bible says, by faith we believe that our walls were framed by the word of God. The word of God frames things. It's material for building. Amen. Just use it. It didn't say, well, use it when you feel like it. Believe in that material and use it. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? Don't let your, your fear speak. Let your faith speak. Are you with me? The greater one lives in you. Say, everybody say, the greater one lives in me. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. It says, we having... The same spirit of faith. You see, faith is a spirit. Everybody says a spirit. The same way fear is a spirit. And both of them are released through words. Fear comes out of your speech. So does faith. How do you know somebody's afraid? They talk afraid. They heard from the doctor and the speech is full of fear. It's laced with fear. But when you come from God, it should be laced with a fire of faith. Amen. So when you speak, it will burn anything that doesn't look like God. Release those words and change your world. That's the key to your victory. We having the same spirit of faith. Everybody say, I have the same spirit of faith. In other words, you don't have the same kind of spirit. You have the same spirit. That means the same spirit of faith that says light be is the same one at work in you. Amen. You don't have a different one. You have the same. That's why it says in Mark 11 verse 22, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Same spirit. Everybody says the same spirit. It's not about just faith. It's the spirit that gives life. You can have faith in failure. You can have fail, uh, faith in troubles. Some people have faith in troubles. They believe more in their troubles than in their success. Do you know some people are afraid of success? Because they don't know what to do when they're successful. Oh Lord, don't bless me too much, they say. Because I don't know how to handle it. Well, let him bless you so much, send it to me. I know how to handle it, hallelujah. Handling success is not our problem. We are success walking around. Can I have a big amen? Say, I am success. With legs. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? 
It doesn't matter what happened yesterday or today in the morning before you heard this message. You are resetting yourself. Amen. Your tongue is resetting. The Bible says in James, it says the tongue is a small member, but it can do great damage. The tongue is a little thing. It's like what controls a ship? The rudder. The rudder that controls a ship. It's a small thing, but controls this big thing. Same thing is with your tongue. It controls your whole life like a ship. Your tongue controls your whole life and so when people say well you don't understand you know I've been praying I didn't say pray it says say speak everybody says speak you can pray all you want until you start declaring you start creating it nothing happens see I said none of you is gonna be broke Amen. and so when you see me you begin to succeed because you are too afraid to fail <laughs> I say, you can't be broke. You see me say, oh, dad, I'm doing great. Huh? You start, you, your words change. I know what I'm doing. Can somebody say amen? amen? Because when I say, you cannot be around me and stay broke, you see me, you say, okay, I want to be around him. I can't stay broke. <laughs> so you start talking, winning talk. Amen. And you start winning. Amen. Before you realize, it becomes your lifestyle. I set the atmosphere around so that now you understand the least you can be is a multi-millionaire. Some people say, well, I just, I don't need to be a millionaire. I said, then don't hang around me because we have a lot of things to do with that money. Amen. Stop thinking about just keeping money in the bank. No, money is for giving. Amen. 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 We have a world to reach. Amen. We don't have time to keep money in the bank and say, oh, no, we want to create industries yes. so that we can go out there and impact the world. Yes. When they ask about solution, we should be number one on the list that supplies it for them. Can somebody say Amen. Our faith must be active. When we speak, we should tell them, yes, we can give, it, give you what you want. Amen. Not, let me pray about it. No. We don't pray about it. We have prayed. That's why we're supplying solutions now. Amen. And God is not deaf. He heard us the first time. Amen. Can I have a big amen? amen? Some people's God is deaf. They pray over the same thing. Next week, the same thing. As if God is on vacation. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you know what I prayed two weeks ago? And I prayed last week. Lord, I'm going to pray again this week. In case you didn't hear the other request I gave you. I know you're so busy, Lord, with all the world's problem. So that's how people talk to God. See, when I talk to him, I don't care about the world. I care about my relationship with him. When I'm talking, we talk about the world. See, it's about me and him. It's not about other people. It's about me and him and the instructions to go and impact others. That's simple. So I'm not like, oh, Lord, I know you're very busy. You don't have time for me, but I'm just going to throw this little request in case, just in case it comes through your table, you can see it and sign off. <laughs> now, we don't say it that way, but that's the mentality of some people. They said, God has too many problems. My problem is just too little. <laughs> God has problems, right? He's dealing with too much. You know, that other guy, ah, his problem is too much. I can't even bring mine. No, God cares about your little problem. He, he just wants you happy, that your joy may be full. Ask and you shall receive so that you can be happy, period. Why? God wants you happy. Which parent doesn't want their kids happy? A parent that doesn't want their kids happy is, is a sadist. It's, it's a bad thing. Every parent wants their kids happy. Why? When they're successful, that's the joy of it. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? How does this happen? These are spiritual laws. Let's look at Mark, uh, let's look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. For we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, he believed his word. He says, I believe and therefore have I spoken. I'm giving you keys for your victory. You believe. That word believe means what? You have the spirit of faith and then your belief. And then you speak. So faith and believing are two different things. Believing is your picture you form after faith shows up. What do you see? That is what you're going to speak. Does that make sense? In other words, you have faith to create. Now begin to paint the picture of what you want. 
You begin to believe it, design it, look at the magazine, think about what you want to achieve, and then start speaking what picture you have. That's called believing. Believing means you have painted the picture of your final product. Hebrews 11, 6, with our faith is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe, must believe. Have that picture that God exists. He is. Have that picture. He is. If he is, he is that in you. Amen. He is always present. And he's a rewarder. Everybody say a rewarder. He is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Can I have a big amen? Now we're going to take this really fast because I want you to get a hold of this. The moment you understand what it's saying. He says, I believe. And have I spoken? And it tells you, you do the same. Second Corinthians 4 verse 13. We also believe. What do we believe? The same thing he believes. And what do we do? We speak the same way. You don't like how much money you, you're making? Change your talk. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? Because I see, as dad and mom, we have seen you guys grow. We heard your language when you started. And the language begins to change. And now when you talk about thousands, some of you are just like, hey, a thousand, ah, a thousand. It's just easy. Those days, hundred was pressure. <laughs> Parents see this, right? You watch your kids grow. You can see, I mean, we... Yesterday, uh, Pastor Donna brought um, a bill um, that somebody's owing us in the house. An offering envelope that somebody has to pay us. Yes. Stop looking. <laughs> he wrote it when he was four years old. How much is it? 19 billion. He owes us 19 billion. <laughs> four, with a B. Billion. billion. <laughs> Paul is smiling in the back. He was the one that wrote it. He was four years old. He owes us 19 billion. You better, be, you better be getting that business done. We will collect. <laughs> you better make money. Hey. I owe you still that is valid. We have it. <laughs> what are you going to do with that 19 billion? Oh my goodness. Don't ask me that question. I will tell you in five seconds. How many nations can we impact with that? That's easy. The money will go like that. <laughs> Creating industries in different countries. Winning souls. Building things. Power companies. To power different places. We have plans for everything. Give us a hundred billion. We'll tell you how to spend it. It's not about the money. It's about purpose. We have a plan for a trillion dollars. Don't keep the trillion dollars. I have a trillion. No. What can you do with it? That's what we're talking about. Can somebody say Amen. Can somebody say amen? Don't get into, well, I have this. No, let's say I can give it away. That's how faith sees things. You see what you can do. Can I have a big amen? But I need to pay my bills. That's normal. Start paying other people's bills too. Get them to work for you. Change their world. Can somebody say hallelujah? Can somebody say hallelujah? Tell the neighbor I'm winning. Say, I'm winning. You see, you know, God does nothing but first speaks what he's going to say. What he's going to do, God speaks it. Mark 11, verse 23. I'm giving you the keys to your victory. The Bible says, you got, so you've got to start talking on that level. You've got to talk on that level. You see, sometimes if the people around you are not comfortable with your level of talk, change the people. Go to people when you see a million, they're smiling at you too. There's other folks just like you say a million. Ah, well, you know, nah. When a million shakes you, you're not ready for the billion talk yet. You say, but you're always talking about money. Yes, because you're praying about it all the time. <laughs> Isn't that funny how they try to be spiritual? Oh, they're always talking about money. Yes, that's what's causing you pain. You can't sleep at night. Let me tell you so that you can fix that problem so that you can sleep. You know, people are very funny. 
Somebody said, oh, I don't like it when you come to the church. They're always talking about money. And I looked at, at, at when they told me about the person, I said, but the person's always asking us for money. <laughs> you wonder why we got it? Because of our speech. We talk our way to the top. Your tongue controls everything. You have a key that unlocks things. You got to start talking like where you want to go to. Can somebody say amen? You've got to talk, speak your way to the top. Hallelujah. No one ever becomes a champion by saying I'm going to fail. It's a spiritual law. Let's look at that. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. That means, whosoever means put your name in there. That... If I shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be moved, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not what? Doubt in. Say, no doubt. No doubt. See, people say, but you can doubt a little. No, 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 no. In other words, this is the believing part now. Amen. That means get rid of any contrary picture. Burn those bridges. You're going forward. Can somebody say Amen. amen. If you fail, you fail. Hallelujah. Just go forward and possess the land. Amen. When you have that mentality, you always reach new territories. Amen. But if you're too afraid of burning bridges, oh, I just want to just play safe. You know, it's like a, a, a boat. It's not meant to be tied to the, to the harbor. It's meant to sail the, the oceans. Can somebody say amen? amen? Some people are playing it safe. Oh, there are going to be waves. Yes, there are going to be waves. But you're designed to ride the waves. Amen. Say, I'm designed. To handle storms. When the storms of life are coming to you, you just smile. You are the rock. Build on the rock. Can I have a big amen? amen. You are a rock on a rock. Amen. You have revelation on revelation. Amen. So when they touch you, you're deep. Amen. In fact, you know the thing about an ocean? An ocean does not stay by itself. There are things underneath the ocean holding it. They're all rocks. Yeah, an ocean is like what? A bowl. Water in a bowl. The rock that forms around to create the bowl for the ocean to exist, you are on that thing. You can handle anything that the water shakes. It's like the container can't handle the water. You can. You can handle any storm that comes. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? You don't worry about things. You just smile and take it on. Amos 3.7 says, surely God does nothing but reveals the secret first to his servants and prophets. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now, let's look at that. You shall say unto this mountain, be thou moved, and it's not doubt in your heart that what you say shall come to pass. You believe that what you say shall come to pass. Let's keep reading it. That he shall have whatsoever he said. Everybody no. say, you shall have whatsoever you say. say. Hear this now. That's a blank check. Amen. Hey. Amen. It's a blank check. Yeah. Put your amount. Put your house. Amen. Put anything you want. Amen. You shall have what you say. It didn't say you shall have what you pray for. Right. Say it. Amen. Say, I say. I, say. I, will I will never be broke. Say, never again. Never. I will never be sick. Never. I will enjoy life. Say, I will enjoy life. Nothing can, ha can, can harm me. You believe that? Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. You see, it's just telling us how to handle business. <clears throat> Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you. Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Now, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Keep reading. You shall say unto Stop. this mountain. You shall what? Say. You shall what? Say. See, your words are the trigger mechanism to releasing your faith. It didn't say you shall pray. You shall say. Some of us, instead of saying to the mountain, we are praying to the mountain. We are praying about the mountain. Oh, Lord, you know the mountain is right in front of me. Talk 
to that mountain and said, get out of my way. I got things to do. I'm not going to be dealing with you. Can I have a big amen? amen. You've got to learn to give yourself a good talk in front of the mirror. Amen. How many of you do that? Good for you. I know you guys are well trained. You give yourself a good talk in the mirror and say, hey, Jesus, you look good in me today. We are going to be handling good business. Every problem that comes my way has to bow to me. Amen. Say, I'm a solution provider. I'm a solution. Say, I'm a solution provider. Say, I'm a solution to the problems in my world today. Say, I am equal to the task. Say, whatever comes my way, I am the solution to it. The problem is we never make a demand on the abilities of God in us. Are you with me? Keep reading, finish it up, and then we'll read two more scriptures and we are done because I want to give you the link now and we are done. Hear this. And you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and shall remove and nothing shall be impossible. Everybody say, and nothing. Nothing. Say, and nothing. nothing. Sometimes we just read and don't pay attention to, I love to read. It says, and nothing shall be what? Impossible. Everybody say, nothing, nothing. shall be nothing. impossible. To me, say nothing. In other words, nothing means nothing. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the bank says. If you're going to build that building, you build a building. If you're going to get that building, you get that building. If you're going to get a warehouse, get the warehouse. Can somebody say amen? You've got to start thinking big. Nothing shall be impossible to you. He didn't say you needed money. He says you needed F-A-I-T-H. Speak it. You have it. How did we get this building? We were in a, I mean, I was just done moving equipment back and forth to the hotel. Those days, Johnny and the rest of them, <laughs> all right, remember those days? They're moving equipment, damage it, go to the hotel, damage it, go to the hotel. <laughs> you guys remember some of those days too, we were moving around too, during the reconstruction. I was so tired, I said, I had enough. <laughs> So what we decided, I said, you know what? We're getting our own building because we are told in, in New England, getting a building is a big deal yeah. because it's, it's difficult to have a solid building. I said, our case is different. Just within days, within days, somebody, see, we didn't have the money. We didn't have anything. We had F-A-I-T-H. I spoke it. I said, I'm done with this nonsense. Yeah. I could be there praying. No, no, no. I said, we are done. We're getting our own building. Did I look at the bank account? No, I said we are getting our own building. The same way when we wanted to get the two buses. I already remember that. I told the people we're getting two school buses here. They looked at me like, oh, we don't have the money. I said we are getting two buses. God didn't say, do you have the money? So the pastors were like, oh, well, the... and I took Oren and Pastor Freddie and went and bought two buses and brought it back here. God says, get the buses. We got it. Stop worrying about the money. Amen. Speak it and you have it. Amen. The special license, right? We heard everything. They would tell us, oh, you don't have this. No, I don't care what it is. The Bible says nothing shall be what? Impossible. Come on, take that thing and run with it. If you give me only that scripture, I'll win in life. That's it. I don't need 10,000 scriptures. Give me this one that says, nothing shall be impossible with you. I'm a winner. Amen. End of story. Some people read the Bible cover to cover and can't even move a chair. <laughs> I don't need 10,000 scriptures. I need one. Because that one, I live by it. Amen. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God is potent with God's life in it. So when I start speaking like God, I get the results. You got to start talking big because 2022, you are going to be getting a lot of stuff. Your words will create it. Can somebody say amen? amen. Don't stay there and say, well, no, if you want to get, see, right now, I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking? More warehouse spaces. Amen. We're getting our own warehouses amen. in different countries. Amen. Hallelujah. If Amazon can have theirs, so can we. Amen. Can I have a big Amen. We're getting those warehouses. We're going to get them. Amen. 
and every nation will have, we should be like a military operation. We have our own trucks, helicopters in different places, aircraft carriers. <laughs> we carry all the big cars or crusades, hallelujah. <laughs> we move like a military. Come on now, we are a kingdom. You know, church people don't think that big. Come on, we're not church people, we're kingdom people. Yes, we are taking over territories. Can somebody say amen? You know, church people are like, oh, let's just come to church. Excuse me, this is ambassadors meeting. We're thinking how we're going to take territories. Amen. Europe is under our command. Amen. Hallelujah. Asia is under our command. See, I'm not afraid of Ukraine and uh, uh, Russia. It doesn't matter. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If you're in Russia, they get saved. If you're in Ukraine, they get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let them fight their politics. We, we win. Wherever where they're hurting, we bring healing to them. Amen. Can I have a big amen? amen? See, that's why I'm not concerned. Is there war happening? It's North Korea, when I show up in North Korea and miracles happen, they're going to like me too. <laughs> they will say, new technique, Dr. Charles, new technique. When the deaf people are hearing, say, oh, is that a new technique? You just do this? Is that a new medicine? Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> But church people don't get it. Everybody said the kingdom is moving. <laughs> Ephesians 5 verse 1. Hear what it says now. You got to talk yourself to the top. Oh, this year you're going, some of you that have been renting long enough, you're going to have your own houses. I didn't say a house, houses. You want to begin to own, let people rent from you. Oh, wait, I don't have money. Did I say you need money? I said, speak it. Amen. Have a picture, look at it, and speak it, and you start having it. They will come to you and want you to sign contracts. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Don't tell me I don't have money. Money never stops you from dreaming big. Amen. God has put his word in you. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible with you. Amen. Dubai, we are coming big. Amen. Amen. Pastor Matt Jeremiah, right? Those yes, of you in are. Kenya, those of you in the UK, Nigeria, all through Africa, get ready. We are taking over. Those in Guatemala, my Guatemala people, get ready. We're taking over the nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. El Salvador, I don't care who is in charge. Jesus is Lord. Amen. The cartels, whatever is happening in Colombia, it doesn't matter. When we get there, they get Jesus. Amen. We've got to be thinking like that. Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, wherever we go, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't go there to negotiate. No, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Let's start talking like kingdom people. Yes. Can I have a big amen? No, he said, well, you know. No, don't stop negotiating with the devil. Fear can talk funny. Have you ever seen people that are afraid? They use entities. Just speak like a king and let the devil back off. Amen. Amen. He's hurting somebody next to you. You tell them, get out. Amen. Can you have a big amen? amen? The victory. Everybody say the victory. the victory. Say, I have the victory. Have the victory. It's in your tongue. You got to understand. It's that, that little thing that you're using. You know, people used to pray. No, you know, after a while, when you have knowledge, you stop praying. You start saying. Right. You don't pray. You say. You've prayed enough. God has heard you. Now get out there and say it. Ah. Hallelujah. You go to the car lot and say, this one is coming with me. Glory to God. I like to do that. Wait and see the upgrades coming in this year. Amen. I say we're getting good upgrades. Now somebody said, but what do you, yes, we're getting upgrades in cameras. You're all getting your upgrades. Those of you watching me, you're getting your upgrades. God is an ever increasing kingdom, not a down going. No, no, we are upgrading. If you don't like it, then go hang out with the devil. <laughs> it's true. Because the devil, he, he'll make you cry. Hang out with Jesus, always joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can somebody say amen? Do you know that Christianity is the only thing that you expected to be happy? If you're not happy in Christianity, it's the wrong Christianity you have. 
The joy of the Lord is your strength. So if you're not happy, check out what you're really believing. You just got religion. That's why you're not happy. You've got Jesus. You've been smiling every day. You know, the devil tries something at you. You just smile. It confuses him. It's like, you're supposed to be angry now. I just took something. You said, oh, you messed up my car? We're getting eight. That's how it works. If you'd like to pay eight, keep messing up my things. You pay back eight times. You'll be losing. Hey, bring it back here, devil. Put it back. No, I don't even need it from you. I'm just going to get it from everyone. I'm going to take over your territory. After a while, the devil will just leave you alone. Like, this one is too much trouble. And those that like fighting with the devil will be fighting with him. You know, they keep the devil very easy. He doesn't have time for me. <laughs> I don't know why people... <laughs> Some of you heard what happened. That in Nigeria, even the, 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 the people that were doing witchcraft were protecting me. Make the devil work for you. Okay, devil, yeah, okay. You, fix, you messed up the room, clean it up before you go. I'm not going to cast you out until you clean up the room. You don't mess up the room and then want me to clean it up. No, devil, come back here. Set the thing in order before you can, I cast you out. Why make me work hard? Devil, uh, you know, I told you guys that when I get up in the, in, at night and I see the devil in the corner, I'll go back to sleep. I said, oh, it's you. Okay. <laughs> I open my eye. He runs. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's up. <laughs> he, he's about to cast me out. <laughs> I say, it's you. I'm going to sleep. He knows what to do. Arrange everything he moved. I just said, uh, I'm living quietly. This one is too much trouble. <laughs> you see, you got to see the devil like that and deal with him like that. Can I have a big amen? amen. See, don't act like the devil is, oh, he's going to fight with me. No, 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 no. I just... <clears throat> I don't have to say, come out. I said, <clears throat> I said, where should I go? I didn't say, come out. I just, <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat. <laughs> Before I say anything, the devil's like, I know what you're going to say. Just send us to the pigs. <laughs> That's what happened with Jesus. Jesus didn't say, go to the pigs. They said, oh, just send us to the pigs. They picked their spot. <laughs> have you seen this Kung Fu movie? This guy is so good. He beats the guys, beats the guy. All these bad guys beat them. Then all of a sudden, when this bad guy, though he's very good, they're standing off the cliff, and he does this. They just look and just jump. <laughs> you see, you don't have to do anything. The devil just knows. He just looks at you. He's like, okay, I'm just going to jump. You threw everybody over there. Don't throw me. I'm going to throw myself. Here I go. <laughs> You've got to be in a place where you deal with the devil like that. Can somebody say amen? amen. You've got to be sharp. Can I have a big Amen. It's just helping you. See, now you stop being afraid of the devil. You, you've been laughing your way through 2022. Yeah. Every day, make it joyful. You see, when you're joyful, something happens. See, that's one of the keys to your victory. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you are joyful, you're releasing energy. Amen. It's strength coming out. Strength coming out. When you're joyful, you're more creative. Are you hearing me? See, your faith works better with joy. Because the Bible says with joy you draw water from the wells of salvation. It takes joy to get your faith activated. You can't do that thing like, oh, no. Smile and see it work. It works faster. Amen. The reason why some people's faith is not working is because uh, joy is missing. Amen. You need to add. Can somebody say Amen. Let's look at Ephesians 5 verse 1 and we're done with that. This is what it says. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. One translation says, be ye imitators of God. Imitate God. In other words, like a father and the children, the children copy. Be ye imitators of God. Imitate your father. How does God deal with things? That's how you handle things. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? Is this helping you? Is this helping you? So what do we do? First of all, you've got to have the right picture. Everybody said the right picture. Say the right picture. So you've got to change the inner picture. That's the first thing. The second thing, you've got to also change your speech. To line up with a new picture. Talk as if it's already done. 
Don't talk like it's going to happen. Say, yeah. You see, that's, that's, that's the, the key to these two powerful words. Two powerful words that can transform you right now. Only three letters. I am. Everybody say, I am. I am. Say, I am. I am. The day you get a revelation of this is the day things begin to click for you. Say, I am. I am. Say, I am. A multi-millionaire. Say, I'm walking my way to the billion. Say, to the billions. Amen. Say, I am. You don't have to have it. Just say it. Have that picture of victory. If you believe that, say, amen. Is this helping you? And then I said, you have to add joy to it. Your actions, when you're doing things, do it with joy. Whatever you're going to do, everybody say, enthusiasm. Say, enthusiasm. If you're going to look at that building, look at it as if you're about to buy it right now. Do you have the money in the bank? Nope, you don't have to. You have faith in the bank. What does that mean? You, I'm not talking about presumption or foolishness. I'm talking about you have a picture in your spirit. It's yours. You shall have what you say. Can somebody say amen? You have a bankable faith. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? Say my tongue. Say my tongue controls my future. Say my tongue controls my future. If you don't know what to say, keep quiet. If you can't say the word of God, keep quiet. Let the word, let the word rule your mind. Can somebody say amen? Have you received something today? Yeah. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's welcome Tyler. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you well fed? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Dad. Hallelujah. Amazing, amazing stuff. You want to apply it. Don't just hear the word. Take action. Amen. Take action. Tell your neighbor, take action. It's key. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm uh, 34, verse 10. Everybody say this with me. Seek. It says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. <laughs> you are not wanting any good thing. Amen? Amen? Everything you want and are looking for, it's locating you now. Yes. Do you believe that? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. The law of place is very important in this. Places matter. Say that with me. Places matter. Places matter. Hallelujah. God made places before he made people. It's called atmosphere. When you receive a divine instruction, you are often sent to a specific place. <laughs> Hallelujah. God gives you strategy so that you can implement the strategy and you can access everything you're looking for in your world. Amen. And it brings me to Matthew 6.33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everybody say the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. That's you. Amen. You are his righteousness. Say that with me. I am his righteousness. And everything I'm looking for is added to me. I like that. That's personal. Amen. We personalize the word so that the word works. Put the word to work. Activate it. Amen. Those of you that are online, this is what we're talking about. This is a house of activating the word. Money does not follow you. Money follows you at a place of obedience. You hear the word, it says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better that I just do the thing that he's told me to do. The king has your best interests. Some people just need to trust God. Just trust God. He has everything you're looking for. Hallelujah. Everything you're looking for is at a place. The question is, is this the place? If it is, then so. If it is, then be obedient because it's going to come back to you. The sowing is not for God. He doesn't need your money. The world needs the money, amen? We operate by a different rule in this kingdom. We celebrate the successes because it's provoking the kingdom here on earth. We're doing something that is very unusual. So let's continue to sow because I'm telling you the harvest is plentiful. 
It's the laborers that we need. It's the people that we need. We need to reach this world. The world is in desperate need of what we carry. We say that all the time. Let's do something unusual today. Amen? You've received. It says freely you have received. Now freely give. Release. I can't emphasize it enough because everything you have is looking for you. You need to just release it. Just touch heaven with your gift. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is our constant motivation. Amen? So those of you that are in-house, we always encourage you, if you are not familiar, we have envelopes for you. If you want to give with cash or check, you can fill out your details on uh, the envelope there. And also, we have Christina here in the front. Hallelujah. We are a military operation. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're wiping out the enemy, taking his head clear off. (laughs) I want you to get the image because that's what you're doing with your gift. You're cutting off the devourer for the sake of the kingdom. Amen. So seed this morning, amen, this afternoon. Those of you that are online, go to christlove.org. Uh, it's there on the screen for you. We have so many TVs, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing so many versions of myself. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, enjoy Jesus. <laughs> it's okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, we have the, the next option there. If, uh, Solomon, you want to pull that up on the screen? Amen. Uh, PayPal.me forward slash Charles and Defon. <laughs> Try not to look at the screen. <laughs> cash app is the cash symbol. Uh, <laughs> Charles and Defon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dad says, there goes dignity. (laughs) The power of school veins coming out. (laughs) Venmo is the uh, at symbol, DR period, Charles hyphen and defon. Hallelujah. Don't be so serious, my goodness. So many sour faced people, my goodness. We need people that are just alive. Hallelujah. Zell is another option as well. It's Christ Love, uh, 401-999-4466. And those of you that want to write out a check, uh, you can write it out to Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island. Amen. I want to do one last thing. I want to celebrate this amazing worship team. Amen. They have been holding it down, doing incredible, incredible things. There's a new sound in this house. Let's worship the King this, this uh, morning. Amen. I'm going to dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way.
forevermore. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great week ahead and you are dismissed.